come back out and start it. So I'm gonna go on mute. Recording has started. Okay. And then um, if we could have the PowerPoint um, come up, if that's possible, because I don't have a hard copy in front of me. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm back again uh, for one more uh, presentation. So thank you for coming back. Uh, my name is Lisa Lyle Henry, and I teach adapted physical education at the Ohio State School for the Blind. This one's more general physical education because uh, it's talking about some of the statistics and information about how physical education, how it impacts and influences educational performance. And so hopefully this will be beneficial. I want to let you know that in the slideshow presentation that we have right now, you can, un, you're not able to see it, but when you um, pull it up under the notes under the slideshow, there are links. There's con the information. So where most of this, most of the information has come from, I was unable to hyperlink some of the um, links. But if you pull them out copy and paste them in a search engine, you should be able to access the same information. So there won't be a reference page at the end, but on each page, there's most of them have some information as where the, as to where the data comes from. So, all right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you. This is, um, I used to have Randy's job many years ago and on our emails, we would have a, like a reply with our name and position. And sometimes we were allowed to have a statement and I always, thought this was a good one because your first wealth is your health. And I always had that on, on my reply. And if you don't have your health, you know, you may have many, many other things in this world, but health is pretty much right there at the top. So if I wish a lot of people had that philosophy, because then if we can take care of ourselves, then we'd be able to do more and be more productive um, individuals. So that's something I just always kind of stuck to when I saw the um, that the first time. So, all right, so physical education, how does physical activity, physical edu education impact like academic performance? So the first slide with this is actually um, about statistics with childhood, like um, obesity and weights. So the, oh, I'm sorry, the, so the next slide uh, has a nice graph with some statistics on it. I think we may be stuck. Oh, there you go. Okay, so trends in obesity among children from 1963 um, all the way through 2017-18. You could see the different lines, different um, ages overall. And it does not include uh, data from, let's say, just recently last year. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with 2019-2021 to see how the data will be impacted where we were not in school for physical education or education in general where we were online and many of the opportunities for students to participate outside of the school day were also unavailable but if you kind of take a look at those the data how it's got risen and then there's a few drops in the early 2000s but we're back sadly on track for the statistics for obesity rising And here's some more statistics for students in Ohio. We have 15.7% um, of students aged 10 to 17 who are obese. We, that makes Ohio number 20 in a ranking of 50 in the D.C. High school students, you're looking at 16.8%. Places Ohio at 12%, or excuse me, 12th place nationwide. But then also, this is a big one, only 23.5% of high school students get the recommended 60 minutes per day of physical activity. So, and that's a, so many times after students have completed their high school graduation requirement for physical education, they may not opt to participate in um, all, an elective PE class. But then also when you look at numbers like that, students may not be participating in athletics, extracurricular athletics or just extracurricular activities. So when you're looking at 20, only 23, 0.5% of high school students getting 60%. That's, that's kind of scary a little bit, I would say. And then next, I think we have some more. Um, okay, so health concerns that go along with this. 
th things you normally we used to see like in adults, like older adults, middle aged adults, you're creeping down into the younger and younger um, populations. You have high blood pressure, cholesterol, which impacts your um, cardiovascular cardiovascular disease. You're looking at um, diabetes. You have you know insulin resistance, impaired um, glucose tolerance. Okay, breathing problems. You have fatty liver, gallstone things, and then high risk for bone and joint problems. Again, these are things um, not so long ago that really was very uncommon with our youth, but now it is impacting our um, younger uh, citizens. Uh, then another aspect is like your psychological, we're having psychological problems where students are you know, high anxiety, high depression, low self-esteem, lower quality of life, and then social problems of bullying and, and stigmas with it. So not only is it um, physical, but also the psychological, emotional issues that come along with childhood obesity. Long-term heart disease, diabetes, stroke, cancer, various cancers, and osteoarthritis. So students who may have, um, who are obese at this time, you know, elementary, high school students, long-term, these are things that could potentially harm them because of the overweight that they are, the extra weight they are at this time. Now, for physical educators, this is like, we, we need to know all those, that information, how important it is for physical, our physical health, our emotional health, even our social health. We understand that, um, but sometimes people who aren't in our profession quite, don't quite grasp how important physical education is. So here's some ideas and reasons why uh, what we teach and what we do is important. Overall, again, improve physical fitness. We're moving, we're exercising, we're taking our care of ourselves physically. Also, okay, reinforce knowledge learned in other subjects. And I know sometimes we can cross curricular activities. I know um, one easy one is health that we do. My coworker is also the health teacher. So we try to incorporate health um, ideas and health lessons. We um, self-discipline, you know, when you're being physically active, physical education, you know, you're doing games. You learn how to play as a team. You learn how to play by the rules. Um, influence moral development. Again, playing fairly. If if you're out, you're out. Are you going to argue over something or are you just going to follow the rules and go up next time? Provide outlet um, for tension and anxiety. I know sometimes right now with our students, when they get to the gym, um, one of my students um, had mentioned that she, she specifically called it, I would need a maniac break. I'm like, what's a maniac break? She goes, I just need to run around for a couple minutes and just let loose. And so it's like, you know what? It's the end of class. We can do it. You know what? I'm not going to say to go scream and be really loud all the time. But if you need that couple minutes, it's okay. It's fine um, because I understand. And then another group, sometimes we take them outside, a younger group. We'd like to walk the track on the nice days just because our periods are more blocks this time. So we have a lot of time. So we add and, you know, do multiple things in one grouping. Well, one thing we like to do, the kids like they're younger. They like to get outside and scream just a little bit. I'm like, okay, spread apart. Go ahead. You're outside. If you need to let loose, and when you get back into the classroom, you will be ready to go. So those are just a few things when it comes to tension and anxiety that just pops in my head. Because I know you guys are seeing it too, because students are like, I don't know if you have them in pods or they get, they're not, most of our students are just not, yeah, mixing like we normally do. So when they get to the gym, they're like, ah, they got to go. They are so ready to go. And I'll tell you, you know what? I'm going like, you get it out. We'll get started in a few minutes because I know you, you need that. So that's why I guess right now that one's really hit home because you, I know you guys see it, see it too. I see shaking heads. You see it too. Um, but also the how they get confident, like it's more confidence, sort of independence and self-control. But I will also mention, like, um, this is another example. We have swimming at our school, and students love it, and you know, most of our classes are currently able to swim. And a young man who's really had some challenges in the pool, well, he overcame um, some floating issues. And this last Tuesday, that's last Tuesday, oh my gosh, he was able to even was like floating for five seconds, but he was so excited. Yeah, exactly. He was so excited. It's just one of those things like, 
I can do it now. I can do it. Let's hopefully he can still do it next Tuesday. I really have all the confidence that he can, but he's building up that confidence because the week before he wouldn't lift, left his legs off, off the ground. He just would not, you know, you're in the shallow end, you are safe. Um, but he just didn't have that confidence. So again, there's one example. He was smiling when he left class. Normally he's a little frustrated when he leaves the pool, but boy, he was just smiling ear to ear and he couldn't wait to get back to his classroom to tell his classroom teacher. And these are some of these may not, it means a lot to me. I know it means a lot to you guys too, because these are, these are wins for our kids. We need some wins right now. It's been kind of a hard time. So any, it might be small, could be big, but a win's a win. So, so I'm going to probably get, get excited about this, <laughs> but it's an academic, um, academic um, success. So I, again, we're going to have a reference to spark, um, by Dr. John Rady in a few moments, but there's so there's actual research, scientific research data that um, connects success academically and being physically active. Um, we just talked about how it uh, helps reduce, reduces anxiety, stress, increases self-esteem, mood, concentration. So like when you're feeling good, your body is more also primed to learn, take it in. If you come in and you, you know, like some days you're like, oh, I got to snap out of it. I'm not starting the day off so good. But once I start moving with the kids, I'm feeling better and better. And my whole mood has changed. I'm ready to take it in. I'm more ready to teach it out too. So, um, so again, when you sit, 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 you feel kind of bad. That's I know I do. And I know the kids tell me that too. Talk about memory retention, all about the brain cells growing, changing. So you get the blood, you get the oxygen to the brain. You're doing something good for your brain. Now when your brain's primed to learn, sit down. that's a great time to take on a hard ac um, academic um, subject. And again, that's, again, going to be referenced in just a moment. I, I just kind of over-talked this slide. So again, aerobic, I'm sorry, because what I did is I kind of started talking about the next slide. But again, when you're breathing, you're getting the blood to the brain, the oxygen better to the brain, better for the body, ready to learn. And also, again, going back to when some of the students are in the gym, sometimes I say the little guys, they just got to get those wiggles out. That's okay, because when they're, then they are ready to sit down in a chair again. Um, and probably have students, okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> I think, and then, and we're fortunate with our, the schedule's a little different this year, but m like our K to six students, they get PE every day for 45 minutes, traditionally. Uh, grades seven and eight will get health and physical education combined every day for a year, for um, those two years. And then high school has their traditional high school graduation. And then when students are interested and it fits in everyone's schedule, we can do, uh, we, um, I can always call it advanced PE because you have your credit. So we can try to design a program to fit your needs and interests. So we are very fortunate to have senior leadership support the physical education department. And then some of the reasons behind this, uh, why it's been reduced. I've uh, been teaching a while. So I remember when I started out and then, you know, around 2007, when things really started hitting, um, the, the, you know, physical education, other you know, like music and art where you're talking about no child left behind. Um, it talks about 62% of elementary schools, 20% of middle schools reduced time allotted to reading, math, language, arts. Uh, I don't know um, if some of you kind of were teaching at that time and saw the reductions firsthand. I did. And it was, you know, it's hard because you would build a great program, have wonderful people teaching, not only physical education, but you did have the arts, you know, music and art library and things would end up being cut. So you, when they cut, then they do 40, it talks about accommodate such increase, 44% uh, of school districts report cutting times. Okay. And so when you're looking, re, the reduction more than 30 minutes per day. And so there's kind of some statistics that have, um, it started back about 2007. I, I have that video ready whenever you would like it. And that I apologize one, if I missed uh, no, missed my cue. I hope no. that nobody was uh, giving me the, 
<laughs> no, you no, absolutely. Because again, um, I think many of you probably have written the, excuse me, read the book um, by Dr. Rady, and this is just a seven-minute short uh, video talking about um, kind of a s summary of some of his findings. So uh, you may have seen it before, but I really thought it kind of wraps everything we're talking about together nicely. So if you can start, that would be great. Thank so you. So I am going to start. I'm start it. And uh, if you could give me just a thumbs up, because I'm going to have to mute my computer Certainly. if you can hear it once it starts. So I'm going to go ahead. I recently read the book Spark by author John Rady. In Naperville, Illinois, a morning literacy class split high school students into two groups. One group had gym class right before the literacy class, and the other group was allowed to sleep in. During the morning gym class, the students strapped on a heart rate monitor to their chest and kept their heart rates elevated between 160 and 190 beats per minute by running around the school track. Initially, the Naperville students found these morning exercises annoying. The girls complained about being smelly and gross but soon the students felt their energy rise and they saw their test scores increase. The students who took part in the morning gym class showed a 17% improvement in reading and comprehension compared to a 10.7% improvement for students who slept in each morning. Author and Dr. John Rady says there is a new stereotype emerging in schools around America, the smart jock. Rady has studied the effect that exercise has on learning for over a decade. He has discovered that students who exercise before studying consistently outperform their non-active counterparts if they study the same amount of time. Rady has also discovered that the mental benefits of exercise extend beyond school children. A 2007 study showed that when a group of adults learned a series of new vocabulary words before and after exercising, they were able to recall words 20% faster after the exercise. Another 2007 study revealed that adults between the ages of 50 and 64 who completed one 35 minute treadmill session with a sustained heart rate of 70% of their maximum heart rate had increased cognitive abilities. They were able to come up with more alternative uses for common objects than the individuals who simply watched a movie. When asked for an alternative use for a newspaper, they had enough cognitive flexibility to generate answers like wrapping fish, lining a birdcage, or packing dishes. The science conclusively shows that exercise doesn't just lead to a better body, it also leads to a better brain. Author John Rady calls exercise miracle grow for the brain. When we exercise, our bodies generate a large amount of a protein called brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF for short. In the 1990s, scientists found that when they sprinkled BDNF on brain cells preserved in a petri dish, those brain cells sprouted new branches and produced the same structural growth required for learning. In a sense, BDNF is like miracle grow for the brain. It nourishes brain cell growth like a fertilizer nourishes and supports plant growth. Dr. John Rady says BDNF gathers in reserve pools around the synapses in the brain and is unleashed when we get our blood pumping. It's exercise that sparks the release of BDNF and heightens our learning and creativity. There's a good reason why our bodies are programmed to do this. Thousands of years ago, before the bow and arrow was invented, human beings survived by literally running down animals to death. Scientists call this persistence hunting. Because human beings have superior running endurance, we could chase an animal like an antelope until it died from exhaustion. Although we human beings can run far, we can't run very fast compared to other mammals. So when our early ancestors would attempt to run down an antelope, the antelope would often sprint ahead and out of sight. In those moments, we would need to pause, quickly study the environment, and predict which way the antelope went. In a sense, we needed the ability to learn fast and solve problems quickly between periods of exercise. Without this ability, we wouldn't get to eat the next day in the 21st century, we don't need to predict which way the antelope went, but we do need to predict the right answer on an exam or the right solution to a critical problem at work. So what is the most effective way to get a dose of BDNF 
and upgrade our brains. What's the least amount of exercise we can do for the largest mental gains? In the book, author John Rady concludes that 20 to 30 minutes of aerobic exercise like running, swimming, or biking at a pace that you could maintain for an hour or feel somewhat hard is enough to release a substantial amount of BDNF. The feeling of somewhat hard seems like a vague instruction, but a kinesiologist at Iowa State University has shown it to be the most reliable marker of your aerobic heart rate zone limit. You see, when your exercise goes beyond a feeling of somewhat hard, you enter an anaerobic heart rate zone. The more time you spend in an anaerobic heart rate zone, the more time off you'll need between exercise to recover, and the less often you'll be able to reap the incredible learning and problem-solving benefits of exercise. After reading Spark, I've made exercise a core component of my daily productivity routine. Before reading a new book, I'll go out for a run to get a dose of BDNF to improve my reading comprehension. Before designing a new video, I'll go for a swim to heighten my creative abilities and produce valuable content for my audience. John Rady has also concluded that if we want the benefits of exercise, we should make sure our exercise happens right before we need to do work. A year after the initial Naperville Literacy Student Study, the Naperville High School conducted a similar study but scheduled the literacy class six hours after the students exercise. The school found that the students who had literacy lessons right after exercise did noticeably better than those who had a six hour gap between exercise and study time. After this finding, Naperville's guidance counselors began to suggest that all students schedule their hardest subjects immediately after gym class to capitalize on the benefits of exercise. Therefore, if you hope to use exercise to boost your productivity, you should go for a run right before working on an important project. If you're a student and you want to make the best use of your study time, go for a bike ride for 20 minutes and then sit down at your desk and start studying. If you work in an office and have an afternoon brainstorming session scheduled with your team, hop on the elliptical for 20 minutes at lunch. In the end, author John Rady says, exercise provides an unparalleled stimulus, creating an environment in which the brain is ready, willing, and able to learn. Aerobic activity is an indispensable tool for anyone who wants to reach his or her full potential. That was the core message that I gathered from the book Spark. The book provides a substantial amount of research to back up the claim that exercise can massively improve your cognitive abilities. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one page PDF summary of the insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free productivity game newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a productive week. I um, saw a question that came up like during the video asking about where the video can be located on slides 11 and 12 in the notes section. There is a YouTube address that you can just copy and paste it into a search engine and you should be able to access it that way. I was having trouble hyperlinking in the notes. Um, so I well, at least wanted to have it that way. Sorry, I couldn't just get it where you can click it, but I tried it a few times and it was able to work. So, um, yes, I, I just, like I said, that seven minute video just pretty much summarizes everything very well. And I like, and I like the drawings, but anyway, back to the slides, a few more, um, we have the budgetary constraints, what happens in physical education. Um, sometimes we lose out funding because they, they, sometimes feel like it goes to maybe English or math or science, social studies, but, you know, our equipment, we know how expensive it is. And even if you try to pick it up yourself at a store, it's still super expensive. So it's, it's harder, like sometimes when you're unable to replace what you need. And I know there's only so many dollars to go around, but that does hit us hard at times with the budgetary um, constraints. Okay, so now because some studies that links academic performance to physical activity, the video does it well. But here's some just data to goes with it. 2006 information, 
um, almost 12,000 students um, in the study where they're talking about participating in PE, team sports. But with those students, they were more 20% more likely to earn an A in English and math versus their peers that sat um, and did not participate. And that kind of goes back to the beginning of the video because they talked about the students who had um, physical education prior in the morning and had harder academic class afterwards versus the students who had the, um, later in the day. So you didn't have the physical activity, physical education connecting. So they're uh, in Naperville. And this is just another one that connects physical activity, physical education to increase performance academically. Again, uh, improvements, again, you talk about cardiovascular vascular fitness, strength levels. So when your body is primed, your head's primed for academics and learning. Um, and that's, so that's, I, it's very important because again, if your body's ready, your head's going to be ready. That's kind of, I kind of keep it simple with me. If this is good, this will be good. And another statistic talk about sixth grade standardized tests, 13 14% reduction in classroom studies. I mean, to talk about, I'm sorry, scores. And even though you may have, what they're saying is like, may have limited time for physical education, your physical activity. However, um, you keep the time, but your tests are going to go up. Your scores are going to kind of go up. Uh, so the less time you're physically active, you may not have, see the scores you're looking for. We talk, again, we talk, said that again, um, both of them we've kind of already touched on, again, physically fit, good brain, better academics, and then also kids. So all, and you know, when you look at those beginning slot, the look at that beginning slide, when you're looking at those young ages for like two to 19, it all, you know, it's a sad to see how high those obesity rates are going when we have statistics and data and information and support saying that when our kids are physically fit, we're going to see the academic results we're striving and looking for. SAT, there was a positive relationship with fitness and academic achievement. And that's a big one. Our ACTs, SATs, those are big ones. We know that we're not designed to sit all day at a desk. And I know sometimes when we attend to meetings, it's like, after a while, it's like, we can't sit. It drives me crazy to sit for a while. Just, it's hard to do it, but we ask our kids to sit period after period after period. And especially now when we are not even able to change classrooms, we are in one pod and maybe the teachers will move, make the movements, not the students. So it's really challenging and difficult to sit all day. And even those little movements helps get your brain going, get your blood flowing, get the oxygen moving. You get tired, you, you know, you get the stiff, you're stiff sitting around. So that movement is so beneficial. Um, and the doctor right there, at some point, get them up, get them moving. Even if students aren't able to change classes, hopefully in the classrooms, they take an activity break. There's many little exercises you can do right in the classroom that doesn't take any equipment, doesn't take a lot of space, but truly beneficial um, and then they'll be ready to sit down and listen and learn. Not right there, short, short little exercises. Um, oh, okay, studies talked about the physical activity increases number of capillaries in the brain. Again, all that's going to the brain, improving the brain health. And then more statistics, um, exercise increased the oxygen um, brought, oxygen enhances cognitive healthy, able to recall words from lists. Um, and again, this, you know, it's good stuff to have, stuff to know. And on the slides, there's the resources where some of the data, this information is from. Um, so if anybody would, you know, need to follow up with any of these, um, hopefully that will be beneficial. But this is just academic information I have found. Um, over the years that help strengthen our position, why we need physical education, why we need physical activity. Talk about evidence-based instruction. Well, 
we have scientific information and data to support why physical activity, physical education is important, is justified, and should be prominent in programming. Again, I will mention that I'm very fortunate to be in a workplace where physical education is supported 100% by senior leadership. I'm very grateful for that. And we, um, and again, students, we see some good results that way. Definitely see good results. 10 reasons to support physical education. We talked about disease, overall wellness, fights obesity, lifelong physical uh, fitness. And I'll mention one thing when you are, you know, if we, you know, we all strive to have positive physical education experiences because if you're not enjoying what you're doing now and you don't find things that you enjoy, what's it gonna take when you're an adult to continue to be physically active? If you, you know, students will sometimes, you probably hear it too, it's like, oh, I don't like this activity. I'm just like, well, give it a try, but you might like the next unit better because I always tell them there's always something for everyone. So we try to keep a variety. So in the years that they're in school and they're being exposed to many wonderful activities in physical education, you know, they're going to hopefully find things that they are going to love and they will continue throughout a lifetime, but then also as their adults, because they had a strong foundation in their elementary, middle, and high school years, that they can keep going and exploring new activities, but they have fundamental skills that they can apply to the new activity. But if you never get that chance to have the foundation built during academic years, it may be harder to develop and try out new things as an adult because you don't have the fundamental foundation to even try a new activity. Um, again, unique opportunities for activity. Uh, one thing it's, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but one thing that's very popular with the schools for the blind is uh, we have played goal ball and it's a three on three activity where all, all participants will wear a blindfold and you are almost kind of like between hockey gear and football gear because you are going to get hit with the ball. There, idea is you have goals on each end of the gym the ball has a belt and the idea is three and three you roll down to the opposite side the defenders try to block the ball from rolling into their net then goes back and forth it's just back and forth through and three students it's more of a ground game because when the ball comes down to the net you lie you lay out you'll go to your right or your left because you're going to block it with your body so there's not like any apparatus, like a glove or anything like that, that will help protect it. It takes you to block it. So when you talk about unique opportunities, this is something our students love to participate in. And one of their favorite things, we unfortunately weren't able to do it this year, but we do a student staff goal ball game. Our kids are really good, so I usually don't play. <laughs> I help run and run it. But it's just something when you talk about unique opportunities, you know, if we, the students didn't have this opportunity in school, they may have never been exposed to it. And I will also say I, we have st adult staff members who play in, bar, or excuse me, adult leagues. So that was just, I didn't mean to go off, but it's just when you talk about unique opportunity, this is something, you know, that our students get a chance to participate. And it is a little different. Okay, ta okay so number six, uh, quality of education, like self-management and motor skills, um, promotes, it does promote learning. We talk Kyle ties back to the data what we presented. I say economic sense because when you're healthy, you're not you know you're not at the doctor, you're not running up bills, you're not on medicine. So if you take care of you, it'd probably be cheaper to do that way. And then um, why physical education is really it should is endorsed. I mean I don't know anyone who really thinks physical education is a bad idea, but you know we really need it to be prominent in, once again in our programming, in the school programming. Um, so that's just something, again, I know I'm talking to people who have as much love and passion for the profession as I do. Um, so I, I try not to contain myself a little bit. And then um, it educates the whole child. It, all to, you know, it educates the whole entire child. And kind of wrapping it up, fosters a healthy lifestyle. Uh, it's more than just skill development. 
in, in you know all three domains of edu learning psychomotor cognitive affective uh, obviously f psychomotor but still it promotes in the cognitive effective domains also enhances students development from fosters healthy physical activity lifestyle it just it's just overall good it's just overall good for you and um you know, some of those challenges like sometimes you know you may have students who may not always have wins in the classroom in a traditional classroom setting but when they come to physical education they're going to have some of those wins and that boosts their self-esteem and their confidence and so they can take that back and maybe get that win back in the traditional classroom setting um you have questions i know i probably kind of go off a little bit sorry <laughs> Um, and then again, I'll just let you know, please remember the notes, like the, the uh, information are in the note cards, the like links and things. So you might even find more information with those links than, that, than I did. Um, just to address some of the questions in the chat, oh. the um, recording of this will be on the PE resource page within like the next couple of days. Um, the slide deck there is, it's actually pinned somewhere, right? I don't know if Tom's on right now or not. Tom said it was pinned I, somewhere. I literally just jumped on. Do you want me <laughs> to I'm gonna stop the recording? Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. All right. And for those, um,